I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. The armies which were in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of their mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it they should smite the nations, and they will rule with the rod of iron. He treads, they tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in them that believe, because the testimony among you was believed in that day. Okay, we're talking about the army. We can see the Alpha and Omega, the Lord Jesus Christ, the He who was, who is to come, comes in a revelation of His glory. Now, when He comes in His glory, and he, He's going to, He's assembling an army. Okay, we can see all the verses related to this army in this war that's going on. Okay, so now the war is going on, and it's very necessary, guys, that we go over the details of what's happening with this six trumpet army. Now. You can see here we have um, an altar. Oh, we got a wood burning stove. Okay. We have a table. This is our um, altar of incense. It's also, also called the golden altar. We have something here called a censer. And we're going to go through the priestly order of what is going on in Revelation chapter 9. It's very important because these details are very significant to understand the principalities, the powers, the rulers around the throne, okay? And the, the, the order of the military, the order of priesthood happens around the throne. So we get this sixth trumpet and what it says, and the angel sounded. Now, the whole book of Revelation is a temple service, you know, the daily sacrifice where it's a, it's a service, it's procedures, there's things that must happen. So the book of Revelation is showing us a whole temple service of the revealing of the person of Jesus Christ. So in the person of revealing of Jesus Christ, we must understand priesthood. We must understand the military. And that's what he said. He admonished us in the millennium, you will be kings and priests. You must understand the military, kings and priesthood. Okay, so we're entering this kingdom era. And we, as we do, we must understand the prophecy, must understand these things. And some of you might say, well, why do we have to go through these details? Why does it concern us? It's very important, guys. In Colossians chapter 3, it says, Seek those things which are above, not the things of the earth, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. If your life is, if you are dead in Christ, your life is hid. Okay, so you're hidden. And... You, you are not looking for things on the earth. Most of you are looking for just things on the earth, okay? But we're going over, we're going over the heavenly aspects, the things around the throne, the things, the things in glory. That's what rules over the physical realm, okay? So as we have the revealing of Jesus Christ, we have the revealing of kingdoms, kings, and priesthood, okay? So these aspects are part of the temple service, and they reveal to us Jesus Christ, Okay, so the testimony of this channel is Jesus Christ. Now, 
as we do, you'll see the warfare increase. The fact that I'm talking about the military and the warfare, you're going to see it, okay? And I'll leave the comments. You'll see the people attacking. So what do we have here? We have something going on in Revelation. We have the sixth trumpet, and I heard a voice. And in the Greek, it's actually voice one. I heard a voice, okay, from the four horns. Now, we know a trumpet, he's blowing a trumpet, but we know a trumpet can also be a horn. It can be an animal horn, and, and the Jews, of course, is the shofar, okay? So what's going on here is we have a trumpet, and then we have four trumpets or four horns, okay? We're going to explain that. Um, from, so there's a voice, voice one, from the golden altar, which is before God. So the order of this army, the order of this military is coming about through altars, through horns, through trumpets. Okay. So in order for us to understand the deep revelation was transpiring right here in the sixth trumpet, we have to go through all these procedures. Now, in the, when the, when, um, the most high instructed Moses to build a tabernacle, he made an altar. All right. This is our altar, our example of altar. And, Around the altar, there were four horns. So every corner of the altar, Moses was instructed to put four horns. So there were four horns around the altar. Then he was instructed to make a golden altar. It's called the altar of incense. As well, the golden altar, altar of incense, had four horns. Okay? Now, all these representations of four horns... Around the altar is, is a military order, okay? Now, in order for us to piece all this together, where we are, we're already in Revelation chapter 9, we have to take a step back, okay? So these are the various instruments, the vessels in the temple of what's happening around the throne, okay? But how we got to here, obviously we have the sixth trumpet. We have to go back in time. We have to go back through the scriptures and see what brought us to this point. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about these four horns. We're going to talk about this golden altar. We're going to talk about this golden censer. Okay, and we're going to talk about the river Euphrates. Now, um, we're going to get right into the scriptures. We're going to go through the step by step of how we got here to the sixth trumpet. All right, but before we do, let's remember that in the house of David, okay, if, if some of you don't know what the house of David is, it's the order of how we're to be kings and priests, okay? And that's the thing about all this that, you know, is a stumbling block to many of you. We can be priests the most high. You can live this way. You can see I'm homeless, okay? But I do this stuff. I actually have these things. I actually do them so that when I read the scriptures and I look at the world around me, I understand it. It makes sense. That's how I can go into into Jerusalem and see stuff, you know? You could have gone through Jerusalem, you wouldn't have seen anything. But I'm like, this is, this is the synagogue, you know, why? Well, those in, the, in Ezekiel chapter eight, they had a golden censer. I know what this is. I know exactly what, this, what is going on, okay? But Christians have no clue of this stuff because you're not doing it. You're not realizing, you're not, you're not realizing the lamb has already opened the seal. You haven't realized that things have already happened in Revelation. Okay, we're in it. Now, let's take a step back. But let's remember the Most High around his throne. You have this order of four. You have four living creatures. Lion, ox, man, eagle. One, two, three, four. So those are the four seals. Okay? And when those four seals are released, it releases four horse riders. Okay? Those are called the four spirits of the heavens, okay? But in Revelation chapter 4, you have the four living creatures around the throne, okay? In one hand, they have a golden censer, okay? In one hand is a golden censer, and in another hand, they have a harp. And we've shown you the kathara. So one hand the golden censer, and one hand the harp. Katara. Now, what is going on? It's an order of priesthood. Now, the thing that's in their hand, in the Greek, it's called a veil. OK? 
okay? But what does it hold? It holds much incense, okay? There's much incense, which is what? The prayers of the saints, which come before God. Now, we're, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to get into all these details later, but it's important where we understand these things. Now, it's good for you to actually do these. You can see this is a kithara, and I've shown you what the actual guitar in our modern times is a kithara in the Greek. Okay, we have, we've shown you that. But this is what the four living creatures have. Okay, they have in one hand a golden censer. They have in the other hand a kithara. Now, they, four, four living creatures have lion, ox, man, eagle. There's also 24 elders. There's 24 elders as well. Have a golden censer in one hand and a kithara in the other. What is this? This is the house of David. In the house of David, it says the same thing. David puts the order of the harps, the psalteries, okay? And they have vessels, okay? Vessels relate to the incense, the worship, okay? So the worship and incense is our worship and love is expressed and judged by incense. It's measurable, okay? So that's what we see first in Revelation chapter 4. When the throne is open around John, he sees 24 elders on 24 thrones with 24 golden crowns, okay? And four living creatures, lion, ox, man, eagle, around the throne, okay? Now, let's see what they do. Okay, they have a, a there's an order to all this, there's a procedure to it. So let's go, let's look at the verses and get to where we are with the sixth trumpet. Revelation chapter 1, verse 6 He has made us kings and priests unto God, unto the Father. Him be the glory and dominion forever. So, how we come priests, how do we understand these orders? That's what we're going to talk about. Revelation 4 and verse 6, And there were four living creatures full of eyes before and behind, and the first was like a lion, the second was like a calf, the third had a face of a man, the fourth beast or living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures each had six wings and about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, who is, who is to come. So, around the throne we see these four living creatures. And... These living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks unto him that sat upon the throne forever. And verse 10, And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped for him that sat upon the throne, and worshiped him that lives forever. And they cast down their crowns. Okay? So now we're seeing this order. We have 24 elders. 24 elders are the house of David. In the house of David, you had 24 priests. Okay? There are uh, 24 singers and musicians. There are 24 judges. There are 24 porters. And order of 24,000 in the military. So then what we have, and if you don't understand the stuff I'm talking about, we have other videos, we'll put playlists. Please, if you want to be a king of priests, watch the House of David playlist. We go through all of this. Now, once we get to um, Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1, we can see that the lamb, and when I saw the lamb opened one of the seals or seal one and I heard as were a voice of thunder so there's a sound a voice someone is talking of thunder one of the living creatures saying come and see so this is living creature number one living creature what was what it was lion and I saw him behold a white horse so now we're getting this order of the military Living creature one, lion. Um, horse, white. Okay? And then it goes through. You can see each each one. Now remember, the lamb opened the seal. So what we're doing is we're reading the book. We're reading the, the book, and here's the seal. And the seal is bound. Okay? And that's what it said in ver uh, chapter 5, verse 1. And the right hand of him that sat upon a throne was a book written. On either side, it had seven seals. So this is a seal. It's bound. And then the, and no one was worthy to open the book or look at it, except for the lamb. Only the lamb is worthy. And then this book is open. The scroll is open. So the lamb has opened the seal. 
Okay, and then we go through this order. And there went out a horse, okay, and then actually, um, what we can see here, and when he had opened the second seal. So the second seal is open, and then another portion is read, and I heard the beast say, come and see, or the living creature say, come and see. And so that's living creature number two, which was like a calf or ox. And then I saw, as it were, a horse that was red. Okay, so we can continue and see that the same procedure continues. And when you open the third seal, who is that? That is man. And the first, third living creature said, come and see. And I saw a black horse. Okay, so these are the releasing of the horses, which are angels around the throne. They're called the four horns. And the same thing happens. And when you open the fourth seal, I heard the voice from the fourth living creature say, come and see. And I saw a pale horse. Let's remember those living creatures okay we can see that they have harps they have golden veils full of odors full of incense which are the prayers of the saints okay so when he had taken the book the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb everyone having harps kithara in the greek and golden veils or golden incense full of odors which are the prayers of the saints okay so now we can see this order of the house of David, this order of priesthood taking place, okay? We see that only the lamb is worthy to open the seal. The book is sealed. John saw it was sealed. He wept much, okay? Then the lamb opens the seal, and then we can see the release of the... Now back to Revelation chapter 9. Let's remember, there were four horns of the golden altar, and there was a voice. So you can see when the living creatures... Lion, ox, man, eagle, each has a voice, has an order, one, two, three, four, a voice that says, come and see, okay? So what happens in Revelation 9, we have a voice coming from the golden altar, okay? The golden altar, and it says, from the four horns, remember there's four horns, okay? And the reason we wanted to show you the horses because we can find the four horns in Zechariah chapter 1. We go to Zechariah chapter 1. Um, we see the four horns. Verse um, 18. I lifted up my eyes and I saw, behold, four horns. Okay? So just like the altar has four horns on it, these four horns represent something. Okay? And Zechariah said to the angel that talked with me, What are these? And he answered, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And he showed me four carpenters. And I said, What come these to do? And he said, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. And they are come to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lift up their voice over the land of Judah to scatter it. So here you can clearly see there are four horns, okay? In Revelation, we know that those are the four horns which have a voice, that have a trumpet, okay? A trumpet of assembly, a trumpet of doing something. So what are they doing? They are scattering the horns of the Gentiles. So these are the four horns. The Horns of the Gentiles are the ten horns on the beast. So this is the war. Do you understand this is the war? Okay. So the same four horns are here. Now, many of you, hopefully you haven't taught this stuff and haven't talked about the horse rise of Revelation and spoke evil or wicked things of them. Because they're not evil or wicked. Because we can clearly see them right here. Zechariah chapter, that was verse 18. We saw the four horns of the altar. Then verse 8, I saw by night, behold, a man riding a red horse, okay? So remember, the horns of the altar, you know, the horns around the altar, these are coming from before the throne. It's the locusts that come up from the bottomless pit, okay? These are important distinctions, guys, because you might be on the wrong side. You might be with the locusts, okay? I'm trying to get you on the other side. I'm trying to get you in the order of the, of the sound coming before the throne, okay? Uh, there was a, you know, a, a red horse 
and he stood among the myrtle trees in the ravine, and behind him there were red horses, speckled and white. So here we can clearly see some of the horse riders of Revelation. Now, uh, we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this. But just to prove the fact, we can go to Zechariah chapter 6. Zechariah chapter 6, it's the same horses with chariots. I turned and lifted up my eyes, and behold, look, there came four chariots from out of two mountains. And the mountains were mountains of brass. The first chariot were red horses, and the second chariot were black horses, and the third chariot were white horses, and the fourth chariot were gristle or bay or sorrel. So it's kind of like white spotted red color horses. Okay, so here we can see these horses. And Zechariah asked the angel and said, who are these? And the angel says, these are the four spirits of the heavens. Okay, so they have a name. All right. And then it tells us where they come from, which go forth from standing before Yahweh of all the earth. Okay, so these are not, the horse riders are not demons, okay? These are coming from the throne. Red, black, white, sp spotted, okay? Now in the Hebrew, the, the, the word for spirits is ruach, it can be winds, okay? So this relates to the four winds, the four spirits of the heavens. It's an angelic order. It's an order around the throne, okay? So they're not devil, they're not evil. You can clearly see they are the four horns, so when these, the sixth trumpet is sounded, it's putting to the military together in this order. Okay? Okay, back to Revelation chapter 6. In chapter 6, we saw the seals open. We saw the horse riders going forth. Okay? Then in verse 16, it says, um, Those that were hiding the mountains, they said, Fall on us, hide us from the person of him that is seated on the throne. Okay, so we have the person seated on the throne. Then it says in uh, chapter 7, verse 1, And with these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. Okay? So this is a description of the throne. Okay, these four angels standing are the four cherubim, lion, ox, man, eagle. Okay? Um, and I saw another angel ascending from the east sun, having the seal of the living God. Okay, so remember, we saw the lamb had the seal, okay, and the seal opens the book, okay, but at the same time the lamb opens the seal, there are people that are being sealed, okay. Now let's pay um, close attention to this angel. So this angel comes, he has the seal of the living God, okay. Now this same angel, we, we want to see this pattern of what's taking place in Revelation, we're going to see it as well in Ezekiel. But let's follow with the prophecy and what it says. Okay, so then what happens is he, he says, don't let the winds blow. Don't let the trumpets blow. Okay, hold them back. Hold, hold back the judgment for something. What is the something? That he would seal the servants of God in their forehead. And then he saw the number of them sealed, 144,000. Now, you can see the order of king, uh, kings and priests, okay? Originally, the priesthood was for all 12 tribes, okay? All 12 tribes, he said, I've made you a kingdom of priests, okay? You can see that. I think it's Exodus 18, I believe, 18 or 19, around there, when, when, he, when he comes in his glory, is the same thing. It's his throne coming in glory, okay? So when you see uh, Revelation chapter 7, you see 12 tribes. These are the kingdom Priest. These are, it's not just Levi, it's all of them. These are the 12 tribes, okay? Coming as kings and priests, being organized around the throne, okay? What was the organization? Four and 12. Always the order, guys, is four and 12. You have four and, and then 12, okay? That's New Jerusalem, etc. So we can see this one angel. We saw what he did, right? He had the seal of the living God. Now, as we proceed through Revelation, we get to chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven in the space of half an hour. Now, what this relates to is this is, now these are not all just specific things in time, but this relates to the Day of Atonement. In the Day of Atonement, the priest would take coals, 
okay, from the altar, and he would he would um, take the coal with the incense, take much incense with a golden censer, and he would bring that within the veil. He would bring that into the place called the Holy of Holies that was holding the Ark of the Covenant, okay? So that's what is um, taking place in Revelation 8, okay? So you have the seventh seal open, and you have this silence because you have an offering taking place, and we don't know what the outcome is. Is the offering received? Is it not? Okay, so that's what the typology is here, okay? And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and then were given seven trumpets. So we have the seven angels with the seven trumpets, okay? And another angel in, stood at the altar, okay? Here's our altar, angel standing at the altar. Um, and there was given unto him, okay, he, well, he stood at the altar having a golden censer, okay? So this is our golden censer, okay? So he's standing by the altar, okay, and he has a, a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, okay? So what we can do, we can actually, let's actually do this, do this step by step. So you can see we have some incense, some examples of incense, okay? And we'll put, we'll do this as a matter of example. It's actually good to do this because then you can, you know, actually see how this um, type of thing works. And, okay, he has some incense. I should actually use both types here. I've got this one too. Okay, so he, he's, he's doing this Day of Atonement offering. He has a golden censer. There was given to him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar. Okay, so the golden altar is the altar of incense. It was right outside the veil, okay? But then what he would do is he would take a coal from the altar and bring it into the Holy of Holies. So, um, we'll see how this works. <laughs> but um, this is a lightable coal. We're gonna light it because it's very important, guys. If you do something different, it's strange fire, okay? And that's why, you know, our whole lives is judged, our worship, what are we doing? Are we doing this properly? Okay, they offered strange fire. They were not doing it properly. Okay, so you take a coal from the altar, you have a golden censer with much incense. Okay, see, is that guy going? All right, and the same thing, once your coal is going, and then you put your incense, so hopefully, this will go if it's lit, all right? And he would offer it on the golden altar, okay? So we can see that's what the angel is doing. He's offering up with the prayers of the saints and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand, okay? So here you can see, hopefully, I don't hope you can see it in the video, there's smoke um, from the incense, okay? Rising up, the prayers of the saints. We're gonna look at some of the prayers of the saints in a moment, we'll see precisely what they are. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar. Now, the other thing is that we have different types of vessels here. So sometimes the, the, the censer you can have coals like this, or some, some of these things can be like a shovel. So um, they're, you know, they're small vessels, larger ones, different things. But, but essentially what he's doing, he's taking a vessel, he's taking something with the fire off the altar. Okay, he's taking a coal. I don't know if I can get a coal. Yeah, here, here's one. Okay. He's taking a coal from an altar with something like a shovel like this, right? Uh, from the altar and cast it to the earth. So this is all taking place. This is uh, taking place before the throne. He's taking the, the coal, he's taking the fire with the shovel and then he casts it to the earth. Oh, it comes down, okay? And then it says, there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake, okay? All of this is, is transpiring right at the seventh seal, okay? So when this uh, whole thing takes place, 
okay? Um, verse 6 says, And seven angels which had their seven trumpets began to sound. Okay, so then the seven trumpets are blown. Okay? Now, the reason we're going through all these details, okay, the reason we're doing this, while well, it's hot, <laughs> is because we always come, we're going through all these procedures. These are all important for us, okay? Because this is all real. This is all happening. This is all happening, okay? It's already happened, all right? But the reason we're going through step by step is to see what's happening with this army, okay? You can see the people sealed. You can see um, the golden censer. We can see this various things. Now, let's compare this to Ezekiel. Now, in the, in the book of Ezekiel, um, in chapter 10, actually, let's go to chapter 9 because we first see this angel. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 9, and we first see this same thing taking place. So we... Remember, we compare the scriptures line upon line, precept upon precept, right? Okay. Um, let's go to verse 9, verse 2. And a man was clothed in linen, which had a writer's ink horn, is what the King James said. Really, the writer's ink horn is really a scroll case. Okay, so he has a he has a book, he has a scroll, and it's in a it's in a case, okay, at his side. Okay. He has a uh, scroll case at his side, and he went and stood by the brazen altar. Okay, so now let's remember everything we saw in Revelation. This guy, what does he have? He's got the scroll case. He's by the altar. Okay, he's by the brazen altar. And what does he, what does he do? In the, um, let's see. And the man who was clothed in, okay, was by his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, in the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark on the foreheads of the men which sigh and cry for the abominations thereof. So, what, he, what, what he's doing, he has this seal. Okay, set a mark, set a seal. We saw in Revelation, we had the angel that had the seal of the living God coming from the east, right? Well, this is the same typology. We have the same pattern, the same thing being expressed right here. Set a mark, set a seal on the foreheads of them, okay? Of why? They cry for the abominations, okay? So this is about prayer. The 140,000 are about prayer, about crying out for the abominations. Praying the nines, Daniel 9, Nehemiah 9, Ezra 9, okay? Of the wickedness of the people, okay? So here you can see this angel is described as being clothed in white linen. Now, then when we get to um, Ezekiel chapter 10... All right, the the uh, same angel is is listed. He's here. He's part of the proceedings that that continue. And what we have is we have the cherubim, okay. And the cherubim are described, and a throne is described, okay. In verse two, and he spake to the man that was clothed in light linen and said, "Go in between the wheels and under the cherub and fill your hand with the coals of fire from between the cherubim." So now what Ezekiel is seeing is he. He, he is seeing the cherubim, and he's going, and he's actually filling his hands with the coals. Okay, so this is obviously a different type of coal than this one, because our hands are going to burn. But we can see the same thing. So what do you have? He had the seal of the living God. He has the coals, okay? He has the coals in his hand, and, um, and, and, and he spake to him. He had coals of his fire, and from the cherubim, and he said, Scatter them over the city. And he went out in my sight. Okay, so the same thing. He's taking the coals. He's taking the coals just like the other um, angel. He had he had the coals. And he remember before, they cast him to the earth. Okay? So he sealed those that were crying for the abominations. And then we have this angel clothed with white linen. He's taking the coals from the fire. And he's scattering it over the city, over Jerusalem. Okay? Uh, okay, verse 6. And again, and it came to pass when he had uh, commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take the fire from between the wheels, between the cherubim. And he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand between the cherubims into the fire in, the, in his hands that was clothed with light linen, and he took it and he went out. Okay, so the cherubim is giving the coal. So you can see this order. Okay, the order of the priesthood, the order of the cherubim. And 
I look and behold the four wheels, okay, in verse 14, again, we're, we're shown every one of them had four faces, the face of a cherub, the face of a man, the face of a lion, the face of an eagle, okay, in the, the same order we see here. But what is he doing? He's taking the coals and he's casting them to the earth, okay? And we can see that scatter them over the city, okay? So it's judgment on the city, all right? So that's the war that's taking place. It's being judging Mystery Babylon. Now let's go to Ezekiel chapter 5. In Ezekiel chapter 5, it says, Son of man, take a sharp knife and take you a barber's razor and cause it to pass over your head and take the hair and balances and weigh it and divide, the, divide it. Okay? So uh, Ezekiel had a Nazarite vow he was doing, okay? And at the end of the Nazarite vow, he was instructed to take his hair and put it in the balances and weigh it, okay? And this, the balances were really to judgment, okay? And burn with fire, a third part in the midst of a city. So again, this is judgment on a city. And the days of the siege will be fulfilled. And take a third part and smite it with the knife. And a third part shall scatter to the wind, and I will draw a sword after them. So the, remember what it's saying, a third, a third, a third, okay? And, um, and take uh, a third and cast it in the fire. So guys, you'll see in the old videos, you'll see that I had dreadlocks, I had long hair. I was doing a Nazarite vow. And I actually did this, I'll put a link in the description for you. When I cut my hair, I cut it on the day of the woman clothed with the sun to complete my vow. Okay, so I actually did that. So all this stuff that isn't, I've been instructed to obey the, the scriptures, and that's what brings about the understanding, okay? So now we have um, this judgment on the city. This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and the countries that are round about her. And she has changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statues more than the countries that are round about her for they are they have refused my judgments and my statues they have not walked in them so this is the apostate church okay because the apostate church this war is against the apostate church it's against mystery babylon it's against those that are offering incense to the queen of heaven okay and so you can see a third a third a third now this is leading to armageddon so Ezekiel is doing this process. You see a third. He cuts his hair. A third of it is, is going through different judgments. Fire, the sword, okay? And you can even see these um, relate to the, the war. And the four sore judgments. If you don't, I have another video on this. I'm not going to have, I don't have the time to do it. It's called the four sore judgments throughout the book of Ezekiel and elsewhere. Okay, famine, evil beasts pestilence and the sword okay these are the four judgments um, against the apostasy okay now these are not just against the apostate church they're judgments on the whole world because they have not believed in Jesus Christ okay so there we see in Ezekiel the third now let's also see that this army this military everything that's happening okay is also Armageddon. The judgment on the city we can see in Matthew chapter 22 when it's talking about the marriage supper. And when those don't come, the king heard he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and he destroyed those murders and he burned their city. Okay, Mystery Babylon, that's the judgment on the city. As well, I know some of you have been uh, curious about the interpretation of Daniel chapter 9 when it, it's talking about this army. Okay. Um, Daniel 9 and in verse uh, 26. And the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood. Okay, so this is the war. This is the, the army. You see there's a prince. Okay, you see the order of the four horns, the judgment on the city. Now, this is leading to Armageddon. Okay, it's leading to Armageddon because let's remember everything we have, the golden censer, the altar, now, these things you see throughout the book of Revelation. But if we go into Revelation 14, um, once you understand the altar, now we can understand the voice coming out of the altar. And there came 
And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the altar and had power over the fire and cried with a loud cry unto, unto him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth and for her grapes in the ripe. And the angel thrust his sickle in the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it um, and cast it to the great wine press of the wrath of God. Okay, so here we can see the association with the voice coming from the altar. It's also the voice coming from the altar with the army, with the military. As well, in Revelation 16, uh, verse 5, I heard an angel of the water say, You are righteous, O Lord, which was, which uh, was and is to come, because you have judged thus, for they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, uh, which you have, have, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. So again, we have the altar, a voice coming out of the altar, a voice coming from the four horns, a voice coming before the throne. And then we see them gathered, verse 16, and he gathered them together into a place called Armageddon. So this is the war. This is the military um, leading to Armageddon. As well, we've, we've shown you before in the intro, um, reciting Revelation chapter 19. And the armies which were in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed fine linen, white and clean. And out of their mouth went a sharp sword, that with them they should smite the nations. And they tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of God Almighty. So this is the military. This is the order that's gone forth, okay? It is sealed, 144,000. It is coming from the, the throne, the four angels, the four winds of the heaven. Now, another important thing to, to go before we wrap this up is the, the uh, information on the Euphrates. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 9. And guys, all of that, everything I explained to you, we had to go through those details because that is what's leading to this sixth trumpet. When we get the sixth trumpet and we get the four horns in the golden altar, it's necessary for us to go through all the details. What is the altar? The voice coming from the altar, voice coming from the throne, the golden censer, the incense, okay? In fact, I don't want to forget this. Um, I have so much information. Before we go to Revelation, let's remember the horse riders, okay? Let's go to back to Zechariah. So, um, I was looking at the, the incense coming up, and, and I want to talk about the prayers of the saints, okay? So in fact, let's add some more incense. Let's keep it going. In Zechariah chapter 1, when he saw the horses, right? And Zechariah asked, he said, oh, my, oh, oh Lord, who are these? And the angel that talked with me said, I will show you what these be. And the man stood among the myrtle trees and said, These are they whom the Lord has sent to and fro throughout the earth. And, they, and answered the angel of Yahweh that stood among the myrtle trees said, We have walked to and throughout the whole earth. And behold, the earth sits still and is at rest. Now, now we get into the prayer. Okay, so remember it said that the incense rise, the prayer of the saints. Well, the saints is people, but it's also prayers of angels. So we have the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem? Okay, so let's remember everything that's going on. Jerusalem is New Jerusalem, is the, the believers. It, Jerusalem also is Mystery Babylon, okay? Even though Jerusalem is one city, there's a war, there's a fight for that city. Mystery Babylon, Mystery Babylon uh, in confusion, the, the harlot against the Lord of hosts. That's the war that's going on. Um, how long will you have mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah against which you have had indignation these 70 years? Now, in order for us to understand the prophecy, it says the four angels were loose, as Revelation 9, were loose for and prepared for an hour, for a day, for a month, for a year. Okay, four things. An hour, a day, a month, a year. 
And we find that hour, day, month, year, right here in Zechariah. Now the angel's prayer, the prayer of the saint that's going up, is telling us the importance of 70 years. Okay? When, O oh Lord, you, when the, the 70 years, it's happened. Okay? It's Cyrus's decree. Well, if we go back, we can see this time. Zechariah verse 7, chapter 1, verse 7, upon the 24th day of the 11th month, which is the month of Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, or both years of Darius, came the word of Lord of Zechariah, the son of, um, saying, by night. So when's the hour? It's night. When's the day? The 24th day. When's the month? The 11th month. When is the year? Darius. Now the word second can be both years of Darius, okay? So just as when that's what the only signs you guys see is what's on the earth. These are all the heavenly signs, the heavenly order that we're showing you, okay? But this is when this army, the call went to assemble. Okay, now we're here. We're two years later, okay? So the, the 24th day of the 11th month was two months after Donald Trump announced moving the U.S. Embassy. That was the sign that we had of the Cyrus Decree, the, the proof of the prayers of the saints, the incense that rose. It was after 70 years, okay? Uh, 70 years after what? The decree, okay? The decree of the United Nations was in November 1947. That was the decree to restore to build Jerusalem. 70 years. So the angel that's talking about is when it, these 70 years is up, when will it happen, okay? So that's when this, this army is assembling, okay? So that's what the prayer... Now let's talk about the great river Euphrates. So we could see there the um, prayer of the saints giving us time, okay? When is the day? When is the hour? When is this um, military order released? Now the other thing it says is... Um, saying to this angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates so we could see this same order of the angels okay but the the binding of the angels okay let's remember that this is a this is a scroll there was a scroll and there is a seal okay so with the scroll there is a seal and the way you would keep, make sure that no one is reading the scroll unless you have the authorization, unless you have the seal, you would bind it, okay? So you bind the scroll with a seal, okay? So loose the four angels which are bound in the river Euphrates. Now this is a mystery, this is a play on words because the angels are not in the river, the scroll is in the river, okay? Because you bind, okay? Now it's saying loose, okay? So you can see the seal, um, some of the seals are, uh, you know, ceramic, okay? So it's a stone. A stone is bound to the scroll. So this we can see in Jeremiah chapter 51. In Jeremiah chapter 51, it gives us the interpretation of what's taking place here, okay? These are... These are mysteries. You have to have the seal, the authorization to understand what it means. So, Jeremiah wrote in the book all the evil that should be a come upon Babylon, even all the words that are written against Babylon. So, uh, Jeremiah recites the judgments in Babylon, and a scribe writes it in a book. And Jeremiah uh, wrote in the book all the evil that should come, and Jeremiah said to Sariah, the scribe, when you come to Babylon and see it, read the words. So then it's reading the words, reading, opening the scroll, okay? Read the words and say, O Lord has spoken against this place to cut it off, and none shall remain, neither man or beast, that it should be desolate forever. And it shall be, when you have made an end of reading the book, that you will take a stone and bind the stone to the scroll and cast it in the midst of the river readings so the four angels are loosed why to bring the judgment to release the scroll so he was instructed to bind a stone to the scroll and cast it into the river Euphrates then then we can see in the sixth trumpet 
that scroll comes from the great river Euphrates. And we can read the book of, of the words of Jeremiah to loose the four angels bound in the river Euphrates. Now, they're not bound. The scroll is what's bound in the river Euphrates, okay? And you shall, and thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise from the evil that I'll bring upon it. So this is the war of the four angels. Now, if this is the proper interpretation, we should see the four angels, and we do. In Jeremiah 51, verse 26, um, actually it talks about the burnt mountain. But then 26, they shall not take a stone for a corner, nor a stone for a foundation. It shall be desolate forever. Set up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet <laughs> among the nations. Prepare against her. Call against her the kings of Ararat, of Mini, of Ashkenaz. Appoint a captain over her. Cause the horses to come up as rough caterpillar or locust. So these are the horse riders coming against the locust army. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes. So there we have our four captains, our four angels bound in the river Euphrates, the four captains and all the rulers thereof in the land of the dominion. And the land shall tremble of sorrow for every purpose of Yahweh shall be accomplished. So guys, every purpose of Yahweh shall be accomplished. The book and the scroll will be released okay the four angels have been released from the river free now it's their scroll it's their information to assemble the lord of hosts army with the sixth trumpet okay you see that he, he had a stone he cast it to the the scroll into the river why that it would be loosed in these last days so that's the interpretation of what it means because we have clearly the four horns of the altar we have the the uh, golden censer we have the, the scales, okay? Ezekiel was given the scales. Guys, all the prophets, all the words must be fulfilled to assemble this army against what? A third. So this is coming about bringing the judgments on the third of men, okay? So guys, this is our playlist on the great trumpet army. It's a lot of information, long video, and I encourage you to go over this many times. Please study this. Please find your place in the order. There's different camps. There's lots of stuff. We got a playlist on all this, okay? But we want to go through all these details. We want to explain to you the altar, the voice of the altar. These are the most amazing times to ever be alive, guys. But the people don't understand these things, okay? We've got to prepare. We've got to get in our camps. We've got to get in our order. And they come from the four horns, okay? The four uh, uh, horse riders, okay? And that's how the rest of the army falls. So, guys, thanks for watching, and God bless you.